is John Kohler with GrowingYourGreens.com. Aloha, coming at you from Hawaii again. I have another cool, exciting episode for you, one that I've been waiting a while and I'm glad I did to make for you guys. And uh, where we're at today is we're at a farm. We're at Josiah's Hunt's farm. And uh, Josiah, I spent the last several hours with him. He's been involved with the biochar industry uh, through uh, using it, making it, producing it, formulating it, uh, distributing it. Uh, pretty much every all a lot of facets with biochar uh, for about five and a half years now I would consider him a biochar expert and uh, what we're gonna do today is uh, share with you guys how he makes the biochar plus we're gonna you know uh, sit him down and ask him a lot of questions about the biochar that I know many of you guys have been wanting to get answered you know uh, if it's good if it's no good uh, how to use it all this kind of stuff and uh, if you're wondering the tree behind me is probably one of the most amazing trees here on the property uh, for those of you guys that don't know what this is, this is actually a chocolate tree. You're like, what, John? I could grow my own chocolate? Yes, you can grow your own cacao fruit. So uh, these are the fruits here. They still need to kind of turn from a red to like a nice, more vibrant, lighter color to be fully ripe. These are the more smaller pods, immature. And when you crack one of those guys open on the inside, you're going to find um, like a, kind of a... Uh, flesh around the seed which is kind of like a ice cream bean for those of you guys that know what that is it's like a kind of like membrane that you could actually suck off that's actually a bit sweet and then you got the little uh, the seed in there now as you guys know you're not supposed to feed chocolate to dogs because the seed contains toxins in it and dogs cannot process it neither can other animals like rats who if they find these guys they'll like eat actually the fruit but not the beans and then what humans do is we come in, oh yeah, we can process the beans, so they ferment and then cook the beans, and then they add a lot of sugar to make it taste sweet, and then people eat them. So uh, just out of the pod themselves, the beans are actually uh, quite bitter tasting, and you wouldn't normally eat it in nature, in my opinion. In any case, that's a chocolate tree. I'm not here to talk and give you a lesson on chocolate today. I'm here to talk about biochar. So uh, next, what I want to do is share with you guys uh, where Josiah makes the biochar on his farm. And then we're going to share with you guys more about the biochar and then we'll sit down with them. All right, so now we're going to share with you guys what is biochar because some of you guys may be familiar with it and some of you guys may not be. And what is biochar? It's this stuff right here. <laughs> this is biochar. It's basically kind of charcoal. Now, it's not the same kind of charcoal that you get the charcoal briquette that you'd buy, you know, and at the store to like fire up your barbecue. Uh, this is a really purified kind and special kind of carbon that's created in a certain way. And uh, why this is used is actually puts nutrients back in the soil, but also provides a home for the microbiologics in the soil, so the bacteria and the fungi. So yeah, here to talk about the biochar today. This is basically rough biochar before it's been grounded or processed as it literally came out of the system right next to me. So let's go ahead and show you guys how the biochar was made here on the farm. So you guys might have seen videos on YouTube where they like make biochar in like some kind of like 55 gallon drum thing that you weld together and all that stuff. But it doesn't need to be that technical. <laughs> what they're using here is a very simple pit that's dug out and it's probably about uh, 10 feet wide at its deepest point, probably about five feet deep. And I'm uh, in the pit. <laughs> John, that's the pits. Uh, but seriously, they uh, create a fire in here in a donut shape. It has to be the special orientation. And they're doing an oxygen controlled burn because they're not going to burn down the wood to ash. Basically, there's two steps to a fire. Number one, when you got the wood in there, uh, first the gaseous um, parts of the wood are, uh, are burned off. And then once uh, that's done, then the, it turns into carbon and then from there the carbon is then turned into the ash. So in the biochar making process they just want to get that first half of the combustion process and leave the second half and leave all that good carbon. So uh, once the carbon's done uh, it comes out what you guys just saw and then you need to process it to be actually adding it back into your soil. So let's actually take a look at uh, some piles that's been processed. All right, so what we're looking at now is the processed biochar. So after it comes out of the pit there, you guys saw the, you know, the fragments and the pieces, right? There's all kinds of different pieces. Some are small, some are larger, but to be working optimally in the soil, it needs to be ground up through a, some kind of process, a grinding process. So that's what we're looking at here. We're looking at some straight biochar 
and it kind of looks like that charcoal if you ground it up there's small little fragments in there just like that check it out Woo! nice and fine and um, we're gonna smell this a little bit hmm has like a you can kind of smell as like some kind of burn smell in there so this is what I would call a not fully matured biochar and this is what many biochar sellers are selling these days is basically they take the stuff out of the pit or their pyrolysis process and they grind it up and then they sell it to you so uh you know biochar in this form may or may not have the beneficial effects that as gardeners and people that grow food you know uh are desired you know it may work it may not work and I want to ensure you guys get the utmost level of success in your garden and when using biochar so it's very important that after you get the raw biochar it goes through a next step or a maturation process which is more than just inoculation as some companies do so next let's take a look at the uh, matured biochar and I'll explain more about it. All right, so now the pile we're looking at is the mature biochar and it's not just 100% char that you might buy. It's basically like 97% char, a large amount of char with some other organic nutrients and microbes. And you guys know if you're a, you know, a long time viewer, I like my microbes and I like my organic nutrients. And that's what they've done. They basically first inoculated the char with these, so that means they added it to the pile. But then it went through a maturation process, which is actually a thermophilic process, much like a composting. So they needed to kind of let this cook down. And then at that point, the biochar is now ready to be applied to the garden. And there's many ways you can actually apply the biochar. But before we get into that, I want to actually show you guys how active this 97% biochar pile is. Uh, first what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and give you guys some close-ups actually on some shots on the biologic activity in this 97% biochar pile. It's totally amazing. All right here I am rolling in the biochar. Hopefully this biochar stuff comes off of a you know skin and clothes. It's, I think I'm turning like black here but uh, I'm doing this for a very important reason because I want to show you guys how active this 97% biochar really is it is able to sustain life being even 97% uh, biochar so uh, one of the things I'm seeing I don't know if you guys will see any random movement here if I'm brushing stuff away but there's a uh, probably ants cockroaches and other little creatures uh, roaming in around here so if there's creatures in here they could live in here it must be alive also if there's a uh, different creatures in here they're producing frass or insect poop which is also another good uh, nutrition and uh, nutrients for your garden but besides that there's a few other things happening in here if we just uh, pile this stuff away I don't know if you guys can see this on the camera but we got we got rootage man even in 97 percent biochar and right mature biochar the prop done the properly way the tree roots of this uh, 100 year old mango tree that's right above me is reaching out to absorb the nutrition in the biochar. Now that'd be cool undo itself, but there's something even more valuable that's happening in this biochar that I believe everybody and every gardener should have in their garden. And let's see if we could uh, find some of that stuff. Let's see here, we're kind of brushing this stuff away. And uh, let's see, I don't know, it's really small for the camera. You guys might not be able to pick it up, but I'm seeing these guys all through here. I don't know if you guys could see that. It's a little white filament. What this is, this is the beneficial fungi, like mycorrhizal fungi and things like that. This is the stuff that literally transports water and nutrients and escorts them into the plant. They're just growing in this 97% matured biochar. And it's probably, they're just waiting for plant roots to come along to colonize on. So man, totally amazing. Some of the richest biochar. Oh, and another thing, you know I always love smelling my soil. You smell this, unlike the other one that has a burnt smell. Man, it has a nice, earthy, mild smell, much like your soil should be uh, smelling. Now, even so, this is 97% biochar. I don't necessarily recommend growing in this stuff straight. Let me go ahead and show you the mixture and the uh, proper dilution ratio that I would recommend uh, for you guys. Uh, to get the optimal growing results. All right, so now we're looking at the soil mixture. Now, as you guys can see, this stuff is not a black mixture like we were looking at over there. This is basically a standard soil mixture they would use for like a raised bed 
uh, you know, whether you're planting a raised bed or in your garden. But the main thing I want to point out in this uh, clip is the ratio of biochar to other things. As you guys can see, it's not looking totally black. Um, and I can see some biochar in there. This is about 5 to 10% biochar. Actually, they're using the, uh, the matured biochar in here. And there's a special reason for using the matured biochar. The other thing I really want to point out is the uh, texture of this. You know, you want to be able to take it and it's just really crumble in your hand. This is the kind of soil that you want to use in your beds. I mean, if you uh, wad it all up, you could easily just crumble it off nice and easy. Really nice texture. And once again, I like smelling my soil. Wow. You know, really neutral smell, nice and earthy. And your soil should definitely smell like that. So yeah, now we're going to go ahead and talk with Josiah Hunt. Uh, you know, he's definitely, I consider, an expert with biochar. We're going to just barrage him, <laughs> barrage him with questions on, you know, why is it so important to use the mature versus the, you know, raw ground biochar and uh, get a whole bunch of other uh, questions answered for you before I get bitten by mosquitoes here in Hawaii. <laughs> 